a dear friend, members of the distinguished delegation of MGIMO, and my own colleagues and friends here in the Indian delegation and other invited guests. We are really touched by your uh, words of uh, warm welcome to us. We are very appreciative of the kind words you have said about our institution. And like you, we truly believe that this is an important occasion for us to resume our dialogue between our two institutions. I think it is my privilege to lead uh, the Indian delegation of scholars to MGIMO ICWA conference on new contours of India, Russia, a special and privileged strategic partnership in the beautiful city of Moscow. We bring to you all greetings and good wishes of India's strategic community, which is represented here by our members that belong to its different segments. And a little later, I would be introducing them all to you. But I must say that we speak not for the government, but for academics, the strategic experts, and all those who are interested in developing and crafting track two links between India and Russia. Our two institutions are of similar vintage as both were established in the 1940s. They have similar goals and objectives and they have worked closely in the past. You rightly pointed out that this is the fourth conference since 2008. There was a gap earlier, and I think one of the key decisions we should take is to ensure that such gaps do not occur, because when dialogue gets disrupted, then understanding and friendship also get affected. We have been linked by an MOU on cooperation, and I'm very happy that even before it expires, we are going to formally renew it for the next uh, few years. We are, I must add, also scheduled to have a shorter dialogue with RIAC, uh, and later I would have an opportunity to address uh, a group of intellectuals at St. Petersburg State University. So clearly our visit in all its facets has been structured to deepen and diversify the time-tested and multi-dimensional relationship that happily exists between India and, and Russia. We are driven by the mission to study, comprehend, and analyze the inner core of India-Russia relationship and to promote its future potential. In this context, this conference, I think, is of considerable significance. We thank our gracious hosts for extending this invitation to us to undertake the visit. And we are really grateful for your generous hospitality as well as the excellent arrangements which have been made for our visit. Mr. Rector, allow me to talk now a little bit about our agenda, uh, our relations, and our expectations. The agenda for this conference has been crafted with due care through consultations in advance. The basic purpose of our dialogue for the next two days is to enhance our understanding of key aspects of the foreign policies of Russia and India in the larger context of rapidly changing the strategic environment and the historical backdrop of convergences, trumping divergences that mark our bilateral relations. This explains why the agreed agenda has four clearly marked sections, namely contemporary geopolitical and geoeconomic scenarios, India-Russia partnership in the multi 
lateral fora, regional issues, especially those affecting the regions that are of immense interest to both our countries. And finally, the characteristics, constraints, and prospects of our bilateral relations. It is our earnest hope that while designated speakers would make concise and incisive presentations on the specific topics earmarked to them, other experts and members of the audience will have ample opportunities to contribute to the discussions. We should aim to develop broad consensus on key conclusions through our comprehensive dialogue. I should add that we will be happy to cooperate with MGMO in order to produce a publication containing texts of presentations as well as a report on the conference proceedings and conclusions. And uh, we have uh, Angira Sen Sharma, our young research scholar, who will be the nodal point for this purpose. So if you find that she is uh, chasing you to give her the text of your presentation, please rest assured she is doing under instructions. And I'm sure with full cooperation of yours. A word about our worldview. This dialogue, we hope, will contribute to a better understanding of the worldview held and articulated by each of the two countries. This, I clarify, should include the perspectives not only of the governments, but also our strategic community, media, and public opinion. India's worldview encompasses several key elements, as you know. Among them figure a commitment to peace and security as essential prerequisites for economic development, which is the real priority. Reliance on peaceful means and negotiations to resolve interstate differences. A belief that the contemporary world is essentially multipolar, where poles are of varying size and strength, and that a working equilibrium among them is crucial for peace and security, and conviction that the world's governance structures should be more representative of shifts in power equations since the end of the Cold War. In this general context, India views Russia as an important world player that has wider international influence and responsibility. Indian leadership considers relations with Russia as a key pillar of India's foreign policy. Hence, friendly and cooperative equations between our two countries have vital global, regional, and bilateral dimensions that we need to study and understand working together. Russia's worldview has changed considerably in past two decades or more. We know that there are a number of key elements to this world view of Russia. We know that you recognize that the block-based approach for tackling international issues is being replaced by network diplomacy. We have studied carefully the document known as concept of the foreign policy of the Russian Federation, other documents and commentaries on it to be able to understand as to how you are looking at the world today. A further step in enhancing mutual understanding would be to examine, number one, Russia's view of India's role and India's view of Russia's role in world affairs. On the former aspect, uh, we know that RIAC has recently noted that alongside the US and China, India has a rightful claim to the status of being a center of global influence. But it concluded that India-Russia relations suffered from a stagnation, a word you yourself used, uh, Mr. Rector. I also came across a thought-provoking analysis by another Russian scholar who argued that India valued its independence and had the economic clout or capability to pursue an independent policy. 
but he also took the view that india did not dare to pursue a really proactive policy so this is an idea that probably we would have a chance to discuss and give you some clarifications he even went to the extent of saying that india is a discerning bride desired by all and concluded that moscow still enjoys certain advantages in the competition for india similarly we could assess india's views of russia's role it is noteworthy that indian analysts cannot help comparing today's russia with the soviet union of the past some of them may even point out that russia is essentially interested in europe and in its immediate neighborhood only nevertheless they all view russia as a crucial player on the world stage a fellow emerging economy a time tested friend with which india should continue to strengthen and consolidate its relationship in fact one of our key goals in this conference as you rightly said mr rector is to try and come up with tangible recommendations on this score for the consideration of policy makers towards the end let me say a few words about india russia relations as we see them today india russia relations have been free from bilateral disputes they have been flourishing as a special and privileged strategic partnership their tenor and trajectory are molded not only by what the two countries do or do not do between themselves but also by the pattern of relationships involving other major powers such as us china eu and japan there is a need to study and investigate the impact of this factor on our mutual perceptions and cooperation in this context may i be permitted to make two points specifically concerning the multilateral setting firstly <coughs> india's interest in securing the permanent membership of un security council is supported by russia but there is now an expectation that our russian friends need to do more and be seen to be doing more in the desired direction secondly concerning three other organizations that is ric brics and eas east asian summit russia and india could consider stepping up their coordination and cooperation a path that would promote mutual benefit on a larger canvas i am no expert on the bilateral relations but we do have in our delegation experts who will talk in great detail about that aspect but very broadly mr director let me say that we will go into details of the bilateral relationship also what is clear to me holding a macro view is that defense energy including civilian nuclear energy connectivity and economic relations seem to offer attractive possibilities in these and other areas our existing cooperation should rise to meet the optimal potential on the trade and economic cooperation front we could perhaps consider expanding our dialogue by including a few representatives of business and industry in future if that is acceptable besides more cooperation in the area of public diplomacy media links tourism and civil society connections could yield rich dividends particularly as you rightly said yourself because public awareness in india about russia of today is highly limited above all dialogue involving strategic communities of the two countries needs to be expanded as the scholars we recognize that india russia relations are also influenced by internal political and economic developments a discussion on this facet may have been desirable but due to time constraint 
it should take place only on the sidelines of our conference. Therefore, in the end, I express once again our appreciation and gratitude to the host institution, the esteemed MGMO University. We also assure you that our delegation will play an active and constructive role in the deliberations that are about to follow. Thank you very much.